So you can see the comment section. We're live. <laughs> Good evening, guys. Welcome back to Sash Factor Facebook Live Chat Series, your online feel-good show. Today is another wonderful evening as we have a special guest right now, all the way from overseas. Guess you'll find out later. Um, in case you did not know, there was a virtual pageant. There was a new virtual pageant that took place two weeks ago. Yup. Apart from a major... Uh, apart from a major national pageant, which held its first ever virtual pageant, there was another one which was held online two weeks ago. And here to talk us more about it, here she is, the newly crowned Miss Emerald 2020, Danea Pantaf, all the way from Peru. Hola! <laughs> Hola! Hola! Hello, wow, you look so gorgeous. Could you, you please so say you. could you please say hi to all your followers and to all our followers who's tuned in right now? Um we're broadcasting live all over the world. <laughs> so yeah, so so they'll be funny. so you'll be they'll be so amazed with your brand of beauty. Look at oh, you. Thank you. Thank you so you much. You look like you look like Zulita Rivera, Miss Universe 2016. <laughs> so, guys, in case you did not know, Miss Danea Panta here it was just recently crowned as Miss Emerald 2020. Yes. yes. And she's here to talk about her pageant, what her pageant is all about, and how we could really talk more about it in the next few years, in the next few months to come. All right. So here we go. By the way, before we before we begin, can we give a shout out to some of our followers who are tuned in? Um, Joey Patayon from the Philippines is watching as well. Um, Chart. Chart Pitapan, I think he's Thai. He's from Thailand. He's saying, you're so beautiful. Congratulations okay. to you. We have a lot of Thai fans who are tuned in right now. Whoa, see? We're based here in Manila, Philippines, but we are broadcasting everywhere around the world. So, yes. Oh, there's another one from Cambodia, Queens. Hello from Cambodia. We are huge fans of Philippines and Peru. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the support and the love. Yes. Everyone is mesmerized by your beauty. So oh. to start <laughs> to start off, here's my first question. How are you okay. feeling right now? What's your current mindset? I'm very happy. I'm super excited because I I love Philippines. You know, I admire all your queens and I admire the Filipino fanatics like they support and love your queen so much and it's like so amazing to see all this nation together in every passion so i'm so excited it's such an honor to be here doing this interview thank you so much gosh i can't help but gosh i can't help but look at your <laughs> at look at you right now from my laptop screen you're so pretty how much more probably in person right so <laughs> thank you. Um, so a lot of people still don't know about you. So would you want to introduce yourself a little bit for the benefit okay, yeah, of our perfect. followers here on Slash Factor, like your age, height, and hobbies? <laughs> well, I'm Donea Panda. I born in Trujillo, Peru, that is in the north. I would say that I'm 100% Peruvian. I'm about like... 8.5 like 173 centimeters um 
what else? My hobbies. I I think I love so much to go into the beach and just relax. And, you know, like play with my dogs. I have two little dogs. And by the way, one is called Esmeralda, like Emerald, but in Spanish, Esmeralda. Uh, the other one is called Ruby. And so basically that's how I spend my, my days and my hobbies and, and everything. That's a little introduction for me. Yes. Um, in case you don't, in, guys, in case you don't know, she is a professional model. Oh, yeah. And the lawyer. About that part. <laughs> yes. She she won Peru's Next Top Model back in 2013. See? Yes, yes. We're not surprised yes. why you won. I mean, look at you. <laughs> You're so beautiful. I promise. Yeah. Thank you. It wasn't it wasn't easy to be honest. There was like so many talented mothers, like so beautiful girls and with a lot of experience because before I I wasn't doing modeling at all. I was studying law. Actually I was a TV host in my hometown. So oh. it wasn't in my plan to become like a model and traveling around the world and so everything just came by surprise, like a life changing. And it was amazing to win because it changed my life 360. And, and now I'm living like a dream, I, I think. It's not a job for me anymore. It's, it's like just dreaming. Yeah, dreams do come true, right? Yeah. I mean, when you work hard for something that you want and you really believe in yourself and in your dreams, I know that sometimes can be so easy. Sometimes it can take you a while to reach your goals. But I think the key here is just having a very stubborn heart and just go for it and go for it. Doesn't matter how many doors you receive, like on the face or how many no's you receive. I think you just need to just keep trying and trying until you get it. I think and being grateful is, is, is the key here. How did you discover, how were you discovered in the in modeling? For Peru's Next to Model? Yes, yes. Or even before, like how did these people discover you? Like, oh, she has the potential to be Peru's Next Top Model. <laughs> I mean, I remember once I was like going to the institute because I was learning uh, English. So I was going to the institute and someone just jumped on me saying like, uh, you know what, I think you are very pretty. Why you don't participate in, uh, in the Miss Peru, you know, and he gave me his card. I, I was like, I don't think I can lie. I don't think I can win, you know. But then <laughs> my mom also was like pushing me like, why you don't do it? You know, maybe you will like it. I don't know, it can be your hobby. In that sense, I think my mom really support me in all my my dreams and my artistic career. Wow, don't you think you've got a lucky set of parents who <laughs> is at your back in every dream that you want to pursue in life? Uh, yeah. You also mentioned that you took you you took up law. What uh, what specialization of law are you? Uh, focusing or specializing? I wanted I wanted to focus in genetic law. I remember genetic I was law. like really into that. Unfortunately, at that time, there wasn't like a properly, you know, that it goes by by step. Like it goes, for example, you go for this uh, civil, you go for the penal. And so you, you go in different ways. So there was the basic ones and the one that I wanted, it was like advanced, let's say. So there was not a faculty for that. And I was like, but I really want it. So my professors told me, why you don't travel abroad? You know, why you don't go uh, somewhere else like United States or somewhere in Europe and you can like, like specialize there. So then I said, like, how am I going to go abroad? You know, it's not so easy from South America. And it's like a very long way. And I think that's how my life changed because I go into modeling. And thanks to that, I started traveling around the world 
And now I see so many opportunities. And with this, with Miss Emerald also, I'm just planning again to go back to my low career and like work on that, like because you have to study, study, study all the time. So I think I want to go back to the university, like to start doing everything, like a refreshment, an update, and like mm -hmm. a, another specialization and another specialization. And and that's because just Miss Emerald, you know, now I feel that my all my careers for like, like a fusion. So I have the low career plus the pageant career and then also the modeling career. So finally, I feel in my life is just getting all, all the rounds in just one. And that's very, very excited. It's like everything makes sense now. Uh, you know, you're so pretty and you could have, uh, I could just listen to you all day and stare at your face. Yeah, all day long. But I'm, I'm curious to ask, why did you take up law? Uh, is it something that you are, because you want to memorize, you're good in memorization, that's why you took up law? <laughs> or you're just fascinated? About I like to defend people, you know, I like to, to defend for the things that I think they are right. I, I, I know that there are people like they don't have maybe, let's say, the character or the opportunities for to speak by themselves. So that's what I, the beginning was my passion. And I remember I was also like having this dream to become like the president of my country. Oh. So that's, why, that's why I said, okay, the first step is like going by law, you know, and like, like going in that way, in that direction. All right. So you're already taking up law and then you're doing modeling on the side. And then you, you also joined the world of pageantry. So how did it uh, all come about for you after modeling? How did you dis get discovered in the world of pageantry? Because uh, guys, in case you did not know, she represented... Uh, uh, Danea here represented her country in Miss International four years ago, Miss International yeah. 2016, where our very own Kylie Versosa won the crown. So, yeah. yeah, so how did you get into uh, pageantry this time around? I, I received the invitation from Jessica Newton, that is the national director of Miss Peru. Uh, I explained her what, what was my idea with the, with my representation. I told her I want to be the voice and the image of people who who cannot speak by themselves. I want to empower people. I want to empower women. I, I have like very strong purposes and like social causes like close to my heart. So she told me like you have to do then the Miss Peru. And, and I said, oh, yes, okay, yes. let's do it. I mm -hmm. did. I, I stay in the place of like second runner up. And that gave me the placement to go to Miss International 2016. Mm, wonderful. You know, there's a question here from uh, Mr. Mark C. Uh, he asked, uh, he, he has a comment for you. You're actually, okay. you're so beautiful. And so he's he's wondering why you did not place in Miss International. <laughs> you were so uh, gorgeous. Uh, oh, thank you. I I don't have the answer for that. I think the judges can be the ones who will be able to answer those questions. Uh, maybe it was not my moment yet, or maybe it was the moment of Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. so it, i think i think i did my best as as all the other girls i think i did my best we were very hard but pages are like this sometimes beauty is very subject hello I think she froze. Uh, she froze. Uh, she's just using her mobile data, guys. Um, 
Uh, oh no, this is live and she froze. Oh my god. Um, we'll, we'll wait for her to come back. So for sure, um, she must have figured it out that uh, she disappeared and I'm no longer responding back. So yes, guys, while we wait for her, um, let's just uh, look even... Uh, when her face is uh, frozen, <laughs> uh, she, she still looks beautiful and candid. Um, I'm going to try to stay away from my laptop so, uh, <laughs> so that my face won't uh, look so big on screen. So yes, um, she looks so beautiful. She really looks beautiful. Um, it's no wonder why she won her contest miss emerald and later we'll ask her what how did she get in that pageant what made her decide to join that pageant how did she get invited considering that uh the miss uh the miss emerald pageant is uh is a new international pageant that we have to watch out for uh okay so we'll just wait for her uh her internet probably uh, there, she must be having some difficulty with her, with her internet connection right now. She's only using her data. So, guys, if you have more questions for her, feel free to uh, write down your questions down below, and I'll try my best to answer those questions. I, uh, what happened to her? She, oh, there she is. Uh, oh, sh shoot. Devices is not connected. Oh, okay. Hi, Jill. Hi. Hi, Mr. Hi, Jill. Hi, Jill. Hi. 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 Welcome back again. I'm so sorry. sorry. Sorry, yeah. My, my phone got hot, you know, and it was too hot. It was saying me needs to cool down a little bit. <laughs> Oh no, don't the uh okay. So sorry for that. So I'll try my best to make this interview very quick so that your phone won't have to die out again. So but in case the battery runs out again, we'll be patient in waiting for you to come back. So as you were saying, you. as you were saying uh, about uh Miss International. Mm -hmm. So I would say uh I think that's something that the judges have to have to answer because I don't have that answer. I think we do the, our best, uh, but pageants are like that. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but what you, what I would say is that you never actually lost. You know, you, you, you win experience, you won experience, you won friends, you, you won uh, the opportunity to travel to, to, to Tokyo, Japan, that it was one of my dreams. So I don't think I lost. I think I, I won a lot. And actually give me the, the experience now to, to won Miss Emerald. So I'm, I'm very mm -hmm. grateful. Okay, we have a lot of questions coming in. My editor, Sir Briggs Vera, is, uh, is mesmerized by your accent. <laughs> <laughs> Did you grow up in the States or, or did you grow up in because you have this accent or did you study I, abroad at one point in time? I left in uh, in America. Like I was living in New York and also in LA, in Miami. And maybe that's why I can sound a little bit more like American accent. But I've, I've been living four years in London. I'm surprised that I don't get the... The, very, the British uh, accent. British accent, you know. <laughs> Is it because of modeling? That's why you're all around. You're um uh, you're all around the world. Yeah. You have lived in. Yeah. All right. So there's a question here from Jill Lasaka, our follower here on Sash Factor. She asks, "What are the qualities of a modern woman from Peru that make you so unique?" I think as a Peruvian, I will say that we are like very strong, as I was saying before, like we are very stomp or with our with our goals, with what we, we want to do. And I think that's coming from the Incas uh, history, 
there were like women there that they were like working so hard and they were like really powerful. So that's one of the qualities. The second quality I would say as, as a Latina, I think we are very like kindness. We like to embrace everyone. We're very like lovely. Sometimes I feel like, for example, here in Europe, you know, you wanna, you need no hugs and like kisses. It, it's something so Latin America, you know, you, you are more um, warm. And, and the third one, I would say humble. I think we are very humble for everything that we, we were passing through, you know, uh, many problems we have. We are still being a third world country. And we still having a lot of problems, like trying to grow as a country. And that give us also the, the sense of humble. Great answer. Uh, there's another question here coming from yeah you know I've seen a lot of I've uh, you know I've always seen a, I've always been mesmerized by the beauty and humidity of Peruvian women uh, just by watching a lot of pageants and yeah I can really relate to everything that you're saying humility the kindness yeah it really emanates from you guys it radi it radiates from you it's very innate of a Peruvian woman to be not just only gorgeous, but to be kind and humble as well. There's another question here from Jervi Ochoa. Uh, since we're also mesmerized by your beauty, he's asking, does she have any plans to join bigger pageants like Miss Universe Peru? Um, I mean, for example, right now, as, as, as I mentioned it before in my previous interviews, Miss Universe right now has a limit, a range of limit on age that I really hope and I feel it inside my heart that that will change because they change so much. They open themselves so much, like, for example, for transgenders and to give opportunities to, to women. And I don't, I don't think a number can define what is the purpose of a woman. You know, uh, I don't think measurement has to define us as a beauty. I don't think a high has to define us and not even the age has to define our maturity or our, our, our way to go for, for a beauty pageant. So if they open and release the, the range of, the, of course I will join, I will, I will love that. Yeah, definitely. So for now, it's a no, so <laughs> because, now, you, no. because you already <laughs> reached the age limit. You're way beyond the age limit of 28 years old. Yeah. Uh, yes, but anyway, so, so yeah. yeah, so yeah, there go, uh, there you go, uh, Mr. Ochoa. She finally answered your question. Yeah, it's about the age limit, so she's she, she's yeah, she's no longer eligible to join. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, going back to Miss Emerald, since it's a new pageant, how uh, how did you get yourself involved in Miss Emerald? As, was it something that you were you invited to join? How did you get into Miss Emerald from Miss International? So, uh, the 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 invitation arrived from the Miss Emerald organization to the office of Miss Peru, and the director Jessica Newton read what was the, the the pageant about and she knew that i was already very involved for indigenous communities and there was something that it was close to my heart and when she said she is the perfect right now for the pageant because daddy low she wants to defend uh, the rights of the people. Indigenous people has a lot of like problematics. They they suffer so much from centuries, and and she said like she is ready to fight for them and everything. And she, I think she's the perfect one to represent Peru. So she told me, and when when she she just mentioned an indigenous communities, I said like yes, please, I want to do it. And plus, as I told you, was the name was Miss Emerald, and my little my little dog is called Esmeralda. So oh. Said, oh, it's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. Maybe it's destiny. Mm. All right. So, uh, 
can you tell us more about how, how do you feel that your uh, one of your causes and advocacies, which is about conservation of indigenous uh, tribes all over the world, is what this organization is advocating for? Do you think yes. you and, or the organization are a perfect fit with each other? Yes. Their purpose, like the main purpose, is conservation and protection of indigenous communities. And that's what we are working on. We, unfortunately, for what are happening right now with COVID-19, we cannot travel and go and, and be present there right now. Uh, we are doing like virtual campaigns. We are trying to organize projects and have ideas and have everything ready for the moment where we will have be able to go and help them. Unfortunately, right now, for example, in Peru, there are like a, a massive numbers of deaths inside indigenous communities. Also with the APUs, APUs are the mayors, let's say like the head of indigenous communities. So every, every community has an APU. And also they are, are dying because they don't have medicine. There is a lack of oxygen. There is a, a lack of uh, staff, medical staff to help them. So it's really sad and it's really heartbreaking. It, it breaks my heart hearing all the time, like this is happening, this is happening. And I feel like I cannot do anything right now because even going there now, I'm afraid to put them in risk because we don't know mm -hmm. how we can trans, trans, translate this virus. Uh, so for now, the best is just wait till everything come down, pray so much that they will recover with the sacred plants because that's how they are treating themselves right now. And that's the purpose of Miss, Miss Emerald. They, we are so connected in the same purpose. Uh, I'm in connection with the, with the organization like already one by one and, and we have the same ideas. We want to work for like a best uh, system, healthcare system for them according to their beliefs and according to their needs and also an education system that they will not be like obliged to just speak in the main language that for example is the Spanish. We don't want them to lose their native languages, that native language that is pure, that it comes from ancestors. And I think it's important to keep keep them alive. And the other project we have also is with the Embera community in Colombia, where are a group of, um, where is a full community of L LGTB plus uh, that they are, they been kicked out of their community because they were saying that it was not following the, the rules of their community. So they've been kicked out and they don't have access to healthcare. They don't have access to education again. They don't have access to medicine, to food, to anything. So we are also wanna work with them in person. And, and that's the projects for now that we have. Bear in mind, we are working even from far until the moment arrive and we can be able to start working in present. You know, uh, listening, listening at your, listening at you talking about it, it really makes me feel that, you know, you really are passionate about it. I mean, the genuineness of what you're saying is over is really ebbing from where you're at in London right now to where I'm sitting right now. So I'm curious to ask, is this advocacy related? Uh, is this advocacy very personal to you? Do you come from an I, in, indigenous community as well? That's why you're so passionate about this. I'm passionate about because I went to visit them. So I saw how they live. I, I experienced in first hand what was the problematic and and it was really sad to see it and and seeing them very abandoned by the government and also by ourselves as a society i think most of us went there for first time just for tourists just for visit but i had the opportunity to connect with them more deeply 
and and then it's when it really touched my heart and I, and it really makes me like I want to work for them I want to really create projects for them I want to speak for them I want to represent them and and Miss Emerald appeared just in the moment that I was thinking like how am I gonna do it okay I'm alone but maybe I can find people who will be next to me with the same purpose and we can work together and then magically Miss Emerald appear and I say like this is a purpose of God you know it's it's something that I was looking for and it just appeared in front of my eyes so yeah it, it was basically how that was how it came to my heart all right so uh yeah so uh the the way the setup of this pageant was virtually done everything yes. was done online so yeah. how did you prepare is it something new to you was the concept something new to you did you adjust uh were you sir uh how did you adjust to the setup considering that you're so used to competing in a normal in the normal pageant setup where you know we see everything physically on stage now it's only virtual so how did you feel about the whole concept i mean um i have a big smile because it was a really an amazing experience like it was super fun it was challenging it was really difficult because we would have to to do some pictures and and at that time i was in london i was not in peru with my organization who they can provide me the dresses or they can provide me i don't know a correct makeup i had to do my makeup my hair yes my yes helping me so much you know he was the photographer he doesn't have any connection with with uh, modeling or photography or anything he's like in a different kind of work he's a financer and you know he was there doing the pictures for me like so professional is is the pictures and videos you saw so it was it was an amazing amazing experience i think he also learned so new things i also learned like many new things i was taking courses of like photoshop and lightroom you know to just edit the lights and and all those things the editing the videos and it was really really fun it was it was a really nice experience i think for all the girls it was a really nice experience and it, it and it put us out of the of the feeling that we all were living you know with the pandemia like we were so focused on the pandemia on the news everything was bad news bad news so i was really focused on the pageant and everything was the pageant for me like okay i have to wake up today i have to do my makeup my hair and i have to record this video and and i was just focused on that that i didn't have the time to feel anxious or, or nervous or like scared for what it was going on i was four months in my house doing everything for the pageant with my boyfriend and everything so i guess it was like like a, an experience that I will always remember. Yeah, so you were your own production team. You were a man, one man production team <laughs> during the virtual pageant. So yeah, when you finally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you finally won, what, how was it like? Oh my God you know everything was record so we have everything everything was pre-record so we have to send the videos also for the final so we have to record videos like as the winner as the first runner up as the second runner up as like for example you are on the top five like all those videos so they can like you know we with the results that they were receiving from the judges they were accommodating the the videos and it was like it was really far because i was like okay how am i focused how am i focused like okay let's imagine i'm winning and i was trying to imagine but it has to be real you know what i mean yes 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 yeah. so i remember what i felt when i won peru's next to model when i was there standing waiting for the answer and everything so i was just trying to relieve everything on me and and i was recording from zero until until the end and 
and that's how the final video came out. My my little dog Esmeralda was like scratching my leg because she's very empathetic with me, and she was scratching my leg, like saying like, "What is going on? Why you're crying? You know, why why you're so nervous and everything?" And it was because I was feeling everything again. Uh, it was like it was speechless. Yeah, you have a very unique experience, right? I mean, I know it's not the traditional pageant crowning moment or that typical pageant experience where you see a lot of people, but yeah, this could really this is really unique for you when you grow older and talk about this to your future uh, grandchildren, you will really see that uh, you will really talk how unique your experience was considering that you won in a in a in a time where everything is really uncertain there's so much uncertainty there's so much uh, negative things going around right so yeah so it's something so now that you've competed in a pageant uh in a virtual pageant setup and i i know that a lot of pageants are might might also adopt the same thing of doing a virtual thing in their respective pageants so what would you advise to all these pageant girls who will be doing who will be competing virtually like um what do they have to do in order to stand out considering that everything that we will see is based online no physical interaction everything will just be in our laptops so what do they need to do in order to stand out i will start making a difference because I've been in a in a person pageant and also in a virtual pageant. So for me, the difference is like when you are in the scenario, uh, you know, you you grow. I I sometimes maybe it will no not be so easy to understand, but you, you grow. It's like the, I don't know if it's the light of the or the scenario or, or what it is, but it, it's like you grow you know it's like when a model is doing the fashion show it's like full yes adrenaline. yes you know it's full adrenaline and, and you are like on fire literally <laughs> it's like on fire and um, and that's the difference with the virtual but with the virtual also as i said before it's very challenging because it it requires you uh, and oblige you three times more because the camera is absorbing you so you have yes. to to be very passionate like you have to really like give not just 100 percent of you like 200 percent and even more so they can trust like traspass the 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 camera the virtual side and, and make the feeling in in the judges in the feeling on the people and for example when i was doing my videos i was like not preparing any message like not really preparing the speech i was like literally speaking from my heart and i was saying they will feel it you know if i speak from my heart and i really open myself and everything they will feel it because I, i'm being genuinely like open and real and and actually the feedback that i received from the judges it was like yes you could see that this girl is is like saying something that she didn't prepare, you know, it's not like an, an speech that you do and, and an speech that you correct and you say, okay, let's record it again. And, and now you need to fix this. Or there was, of course, there was um, the coordinator of Miss Peru, like fixing my outfits, fixing my, my makeup, like telling me, okay, Daniela, we need to change the lips or Daniela, we need to change the hair or, or things like that. But he wasn't there present to tell me, no, 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 no. Let's record it again because it doesn't like look, uh, I don't know, real or whatever. I was just recording and I was just sending them and they were like, oh my God, I'm crying. For example, when I speak about my little brother, literally they were telling me everyone in the office is is, is crying. You know, they are really feeling that, that pain that yeah. you are talking about and everything. So my advice will be that, like, be completely real, like, speak from your heart, like, it's okay if you prepare on the speech and everything, but don't modify, don't modify 
the word, you know, don't make, don't use words from another person. Like, take the ideas, take the ideas, take, process everything, but put your own words and put your own heart in them. Yeah, be sincere, be authentic, in other words. So, uh, now that you are the newly, you're the inaugural winner of Miss Emerald, what are the duties and uh, responsibilities that is expected of you as a title holder? Will you be traveling around? Uh, I know there's COVID, uh, so traveling will be very much limited. But apart from that, um, how else? What else will you be? What other duties and responsibilities will be you be doing? So we are waiting right now, for example, for the opening of the borders. We are waiting to everything will be safe to travel. And as I said before, more for them. You know, I I don't want to arrive in a community and maybe spread the virus or even if I'm healthy, maybe get the virus because it's a very, let's say, red area right now, very infectious area. So for the moment, my duties are going to be spread the awareness of indigenous communities, spread the awareness of how important they are in our lives, like how important they, they, why they have to still be present, why our native languages have to, not have to disappear. Because every two weeks, a native language is disappearing around the world. And it's because it's not passing through generation through generation. So for now, my duty is going to be like spread awareness, like influence people to, to start learning a native language, like inspire people to get connected again with indigenous communities, to, to see them again, you know, to don't make them invisible anymore until the opens of the borders are done and it's safety to travel. I, I think I will just dedicate my whole reign to create a base, a very strong platform, because it's the first edition. So I think I have the responsibility to create a very strong platform so my next successor, my next queen, can still work on that platform and build something like stronger and stronger and stronger. So I think my responsibility right now is doing that, like make a very strong platform. Wow, you really have a huge, huge, huge responsibility. So it's not just yeah. all about glamour, glitz and glamour. Yeah. It's all about living up. <laughs> yeah, no pressure, no pressure at all. So my my next question is to you. How do you intend to spread awareness, more awareness about it? For example, I'm creating these kind of videos where, where I can speak about indigenous communities in a way that people start to get more like, I want to know more, you know? It happens to me that, for example, I was saying a couple phrases in Awahun, that it was one of the languages I was telling you that I'm trying to learn. And I was like randomly, for example, introducing myself in Awahun. I was saying like, I yes, yes. So I was introducing. And I received a lot of comments saying like, a, oh, where did you start to learn in Awoku? I want to learn as well, you know? Uh -huh. And I said like, oh, I have to do something about this, you know? Maybe I, I can find someone, you know? And we can create a very nice project. And maybe we can do lives, you know? Every every week maybe, and we start with lesson one, lesson two. Yes, yes. People will start like knowing about this, and and then I was thinking the same with with the whole general idea of indigenous communities. You know, like creating videos of how they live, like the problematic they have, and like that. I will start creating awareness, and people will start knowing better maybe they didn't even know that there were like indigenous communities very close to them so and 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 make them like how can i say like infections them with, yes, that, yeah. with that same passion that i have with a little fire that i have for them so uh everything will be done on social media i suppose by now yes by now, yeah for yes. now for now yeah so how do you feel that, you know, social media is a powerful tool 
in spreading communication uh, and awareness, especially with what you're doing right now. Has, do you think uh, it has made life easier? Or do you think uh, it's something that has been abused by a lot of people due to cyberbullying, spreading of fake news, and other forms of, uh, and other negative uh, agenda? So do you think that uh, social media, despite its powerful, despite its power, is ultimately positive or negative? I think social media is a really powerful tool. And, uh, and and this is this maybe will sound like very catriona but uh <laughs> <laughs> in moderation it's okay <laughs> everything in moderation is okay yeah yeah i agree with you yeah i think there is of course of course you can see in social media everything you can see very positive comments and you can see also like very negative comments i in my side, I, I I try to don't take them personal, you know, I try to don't make them affect me, like, go inside of me. I just try to, like, okay, I didn't see that comment, or I just, like, ignore it, because sometimes it can get on the back of your head, you know, and it can be rolling there and rolling there and rolling there, and it can create you this feeling of, like, I will not say uh, hate, but this kind of like uncomfortable feeling. And that's what I think people have to be like very conscious about like what they say to other people. I don't believe that just being a public person makes you the perfect um, point so you can throw all your frustration or you can throw all your hate or you can throw all your, your unhappiness, I think we all should just spread positive things and like love and just spread the best thing that we we have inside because I, I believe every of us are very good persons we are just sometimes a little bit lost or we are just sometimes having a bad day but inside of us we have very like pure heart and we just need to keep that in mind and every time we make a comment just really be like put yourself in the shoes of the other person who will receive that message. How you will feel if you receive that message? You will like it? Yes, yes. Maybe it will make you feel sad. Well, that is what you will create to that person. And I think social media is a very powerful tool. And that's why we have to be more responsible with that and more focused about like what we are posting, what we are saying, what we want to say. Yes, true. I agree with everything that you said. Everything has to be in moderation. We have to be more responsible and careful with what we post out there because it could probably hurt our feelings. It could hurt someone's feelings without your intention or it could ruin someone else's life without you knowing it just by one simple, uh, one simple negative word. Uh, I'm, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's Catrion. Uh, there are some questions uh, coming in. Last two questions. Um, Ronald Reyes is asking, who are your favorite beauty queens in the Philippines? Is Catriona one of them? <laughs> uh, well, I will divide my heart in two. I love Catriona and I love Pia. <laughs> oh, Pia and Kai, yes, yes. What about Kylie? I love and, Kylie too. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you so much, yes. Uh, yeah, and for sure, uh, hopefully you'll be given a chance to meet one or if not all of them in the near future. Who knows? By some stroke of fate, you might find yourself uh, meeting them there in New York. For, or, I'm sorry, in London. I met or, Pia. I was, where? Who, who, who? I, I met Pia. Pia. Oh, you met Pia? Yeah, Pia was the judge on Miss, on Miss Peru 2016. Ah, yes, yes, yes. And your favorite. Oh, I'll make sure that uh, your comment, your, your this comment and reaction of yours will reach her. Uh, so he has a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, admirers and supporters from around the world. So last question um, before we wrap this up, can you give 
Oh wait, there's another one here. Uh, Ronald Reyes is asking, who are your, um, who are the members of your court? Who's your first runner-up? And do you, are you guys still in touch with one another, even after the competition is over? You know, first runner-up is Colombia, right? Colum. Emerald, you mean the first runner? With Emerald, yeah. It's Colombia. And then the second runner-up is Guyana. Guyana, yeah. Guyana, yeah. So there. Were, we have a WhatsApp chat, and we were having it even be during the pageant. So we were asking ourselves, like, how do you feel? You know, for example, in the final, we all were very nervous, and we mm. were each other, and and they were like so cute. They were congratulating me. They were like sending me messages. La Lam, uh, the girl from Uganda, is so lovely. Like really so lovely genuine and pure i like she, I, I love her so much and with colombia same of course i i promised them that we are gonna work together because i really also feel and, and i really believe that they were having the same purpose of me so i told them that i will go to their country specifically to work with indigenous communities with them so i want all of us to be the queen and I yes, want yes, to yes. work together for, for our indigenous communities. I hope you could also visit the Philippines because we have a lot of indigenous uh, communities here as well. So that apart from that, so that there could also be a delegate from the Philippines yeah. in the next Miss Emerald pageant. Yeah, yeah. right. Because there was there was no Miss Philippines in the the recently concluded competition, right? There were only 11 of you, so yeah. Yeah, who knows when everything's back to normal, perhaps you could, uh, you guys could visit the Philippines. And you know, we're a pageant crazy nation, so for sure there'll be some um, national directors or even girls who would be willing to, to go to this pageant. So as last question before we wrap this, can you give a message to all your followers and supporters who have Followed your journey even way, way, way back during your uh, Peru's Next Top Model days okay. and until now. I will, I will be forever grateful for every time, every project, every step I take in my life. They are always there. Like they are so loyal, and and it's like they are so important for me that I try to get connected with them all the time with every comment, with every message. I try to reply all of them. I try to to like all of them. And what I would just say is like, thank you so much. There are no words that I can say to, to really thank you enough for all that love and all that support. I'm so grateful. All my, all my achievements are your achievement too. And to the Philippines, uh -huh. I I was learning how to say it. I love you, Philippines. I think it's like Muhatati. Mahal kita. Mahal ko kayo. Mahal. Mahal. Yeah, we love you. I love you in Mahal kita, Filipinas. Mahal kita. When you say kita, it's only good. Uh, it's only referring to one person. But if you're saying I love you to a lot of people, you say Mahal. Ko, oh. kayo, kayo, lahat, lahat, yeah, mahal o kahaw, no, mahal ko, mahal ko, mahal ko, ko kayong lahat, kayong ha, lahat. You have to. I, I yeah, yeah, I have to teach you. I'll send you. I'll DM you the the right other word for it. Yeah. Uh, well, but you will understand. I love you, Philippines. I can wait. Oh, it, it's in a very beautiful country. It's on the top of my list, and I promise after this, I will go for sure. Uh, me too. I'm also. I know my um, what do you call the mountains there in Peru? Mount Pichu Pichu is also in my bucket list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! I think uh. It will just be a pipe dream for me to go there. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Danea, for giving your time and effort in doing this interview with us here on Sash Factor. We are so blown away and mesmerized by your beauty. 
and I'm glad that Miss Emerald Pageant is really utilizing you, taking advantage of your um uh, of your win to expose more about to learn more about this uh, to spread more awareness about the pageants and focusing in the next few months. I hope that um by next year when everything's back to normal, the pageant will grow bigger. Uh in such a way that more countries will be excited to send participants or delegates to it right so yeah thank you so much You're, thank you so much Ms. Lea. and i would like to before we end this i would like to thank uh, your national director i mean the head of the organization sir randy am i right for making this sorry jessica newton jessica newton but what's the name of the uh, head of Miss Emerald Organization. Oh, it's uh, Maria del Mar. Maria del Mar. Maria del. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would like to thank the entire organization for making this interview possible. Thank you so much for granting your first live interview uh, here on Stash Faffer. It really means the whole world to us. Thank you, thank you so much. We got to learn, we got to uh, got to know a new beauty queen again. <laughs> You're not just an ordinary beauty queen because you're really very passionate about something. It's very obvious that you want to be known as someone who's a, who is uh, who is a woman of substance rather than what we see uh, in you physically. So I'm glad that you are very vocal about it in championing in championing your organization's advocacy. Thank you, thank you so much, Miss Lea. I hope to see you in the near future when it's all good. I don't know if we, if I, uh, probably when you come over here for a visit someday, who knows what the future holds. Yes, yes, I'm so mesmerized by your beauty. Oh my God, I feel like uh, I'll be, I'll, I'll faint if I see you in person finally all right thank you so much i hope everything's well with you from your end and i can't wait for all the exciting things that you will be doing for miss emerald soon will be keep us posted uh keep us updated with everything that's going on through your social media accounts and miss uh through your social media accounts and miss emerald social media accounts as well all right thank you so much miss Danea. have a wonderful day ahead there in london yeah, and stay safe and hydrated. Such a pleasure doing this interview. All right. All right. Virtual kisses, virtual hugs and kisses for now. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ms. Linnea. Bye.